Sunday's starting lineup. Today with us we have playing right field, age 11, AJ Bullerman from Bryson, Minnesota. And in center field we have nine-year-old Blake Bullerman from Bryson, Minnesota. My approach to an older vehicle like this is to replace every single module, relay, and solenoid on it. Ignition module, starter relay, alternator regulator, both the ballasts, everything that I can find on this thing. I'll take my time and replace all the important leads and clean up all the grounds as well. Even the blinker relays, hazard relays, everything I can find. Now I'm not an overly cautious guy and I don't really believe in fixing something that's not broke. But, the electricals on this vehicle are over 30 years old. That means they could last another 100 years, or they could last another 20 minutes. And really, when you think about it, that's pretty cheap insurance. Just uh, maybe a little peace of mind that I won't be stuck on the road with my family on some trip, you know, waiting for a $5 ballast to come in from the nearest big city. And because my personal version of hell would be on vacation stuck in some podunk town watching severely obese men in overalls with ketchup stains all over them walk in and out of the only gas station in town and stuffing their face with old corn dogs. Yeah, that's why I'm replacing every single old electronic part on this vehicle. The other upside to this is that I've got a go-to emergency electrical box. I know all these parts work, so I save the old ones in a box and stick it in the camper in case I'm having problems. The other bonus is that I'm immersed in the electrical system of this vehicle. I know where all these parts are. I know where the, how they work and what they do. And in the end, this was like a $70 investment. Over 50% of uh, the parts were readily available at the parts store, which gives me confidence in how easy it is to get the parts as well. Uh, and the other 50% I could get in the same day. I just had to wait for them to come from the main warehouse. One of the blinker tabs were broke too. So you can get it to stay down, turning left, but you had to hold it to turn right. And that's kind of stuff drives me crazy. In order to get to the blinker switch, you need a steering wheel puller. And uh, that's probably a tool I'll use two, maybe three times my entire life if I'm working on cars here and there. So it's not something I want to buy since it's a $60 tool. O'Reilly's and AutoZone rent these specialized tools for nothing. You just got to put a deposit down, you use them, when you're done you bring them back, you get your money back. And there's my broken tab. You can see it catch there, but it broke off there. What's cool is that even though this vehicle is over 30 years old, I can still buy a replacement part brand new in the pack. Old part out, new part in. That's better. Better. I'm going to drop the fluid on the tranny, change the uh, filter, and also the gasket on the pan itself. This is one of the simplest things you can do to uh, add to the longevity of your transmission, is to change the transmission fluid on a regular basis, or at least according to your uh, maintenance manual. I also noticed I have a leak on the rear oil seal where the uh, drive shaft goes into the tranny, so I'm going to change that today and get rid of that leak as well. I use a sturdy cardboard box lined with plastic as an oil catch for my uh, transmission fluid changes. Uh, this makes it easy. It's really easy to dump it into uh, a, a plastic jug afterward to drop it off and it catches all of it without getting it on your driveway. So you take the bolts out on the side that you want the oil to dump from and loosen up the other end and then just take your screwdriver. Sometimes it takes a little bit to help it come loose but the cranny looks great. Once I took the cover off, I can see that this is not the original filter, which makes me feel good that the past owner maintained it as well. And although the pan is a little sludgy, which tells me it was time for a transmission fluid change, it looks to be in good shape. Nothing in there like metal filings that would make me feel uh, bad about the tranny. Everything looks pretty good. First thing I'll do is put those bolts in a cup, a little WD-40. Soak them down and clean them up. You're going to lose a little fluid when you take that filter off as well and just let everything drain out. 
The best way to be when you're uh, dumping the fluid on your tranny is just not to be in a hurry. Let it all drain off. I brought the transmission up to operating temperature before I drop the fluid, which helps it drain off quicker. But I'll let it sit for 20 minutes to make sure I get off, uh, make sure I drain off as much as possible. I've wiped all the sludge out with a rag, and now I'm going to clean up the uh, the gasket surface area, both on the pan and on the transmission itself. That is one of the most important steps. I just always want to drive that home. Uh, the success of your get next gasket sealing heavily depends on how well you clean those surfaces up. And I'll finish up with acetone around the edges and even the inside of the pan. I've seen guys stick magnets in the bottom of their pan as well to catch any loose metal shavings that might happen during the course of driving to stop them from filtering through, but I've never done that. I'll use a razor to get rid of any debris on this gasket surface on the transmission itself. And then of course clean it up with acetone. Lay out your new gasket. I've got my bolts ready to go. I'll hand tighten the first uh, four corner bolts first and then put in the rest. Then I'll go around with my torque wrench evenly starting with the corners. Get that magic click. Now that I've got the training pan secured, I find this the best time to actually clean it up. Rather than uh, try to clean the bottom up when it's off and, and run the risk of uh, bending a lip, I like to have it secured on there and I'll take my angle grinder and clean the bottom up. That'll help keep the, uh, the tranny cooler. Getting back to the drive shaft seal on that transmission, we'll have to drop the drive shaft in order to get to that seal. It's real easy to drop your drive shaft. Take out the four bolts that hold the universal joint onto the yoke on your drive shaft in the rear. This is the differential in the back. And then push it forward. Take your drive shaft, push it forward into the transmission. Now I had to use a pry bar to get in here because it's been in here for so long and push it into the transmission. Once you get it past this yoke, you can drop it down and then you can pull it out the back. First thing I noticed when I pulled out the uh, drive shaft is that the universal joints were terrible. These are definitely the original. Uh, this one actually was broke. I don't even know what was holding them on to be honest with you. So I'll be putting new universal joints in, in the uh, drive shaft as well. Now that I got the drive shaft out of the way, I could return myself back to the transmission here and I pulled out the seal. And it wasn't use that the seal gave up for, it was just age. It looks good, but it's brittle and you can see the hairline cracks. It just needed a refresh. And uh, I pulled the old one out with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. You just got to be very careful around that aluminum. Make sure you're only working on that seal. I got the new seal. I'll place that on. You want that uh, seal joint to be as dry and as clean as possible. And then you need some something to go around the seal to pound the seal in. In this case, I just had an old adapter for an old exhaust system I was working at. I'll pound the seal back on. Nice and, and although I put the seal on dry into the transmission, the inner lips I grease up just a little bit so that the uh, drive shaft doesn't cause any microscopic tears into it when I first put it into it. Now the seal going into the differential doesn't seem to be leaking, but as long as I got all this off, I might as well do this one too and then I won't have to worry about it. Again, the new seal goes on dry, but I'll grease the inside of that lip where the shaft goes into. Once the seal's back on, I can put the yoke on. And whenever I take the drive shaft off, or, or the yoke like this, I always make little marks, so I put it back the same way I took it off. It may not make that much of a, of a difference, but uh, I want to make sure everything's balanced, you know, the same as it we'll was. tighten that back up. A little bit of thread locker as well. Well, we got the back sealed up. And we got the front sealed up. It's time to put the drive shaft in. And if I've lined everything up correctly, it should just slide right in and align perfectly like that. And there we go. New seals, new U joints, good for another 30 years. And I'll tell you, nothing makes me feel more manly than whipping my drive shaft out, putting some new seals in, some new universal joints, and whipping her back in. Yeah. I figured why I'm doing all this, I might as well change the diff too. Just change all the fluids. Wow. That's impressive, isn't it? I'm always impressed by the inside of a differential. You think about the stresses 
and the amount of force that goes through that thing, incredible. I've cleaned out most of the sludge out of this thing. I'll wipe it down one more time, soak it up. Get as much out as I can. Because these differentials get pretty hot and they bake the oil on after a while. And I don't think this has been changed in a long time. Once I get the inside cleaned up, paying special attention to the gasket surface area, I'm going to clean up the outside because nothing says I care like a shiny differential cover. There's hardly a more important tool than a man's angle grinder. That and with a welder, I feel like I can just about do anything. Now technically, you don't have to put a gasket on with this Ultra Black RTV, but I like to anyway. I just hand snug it down and leave it for about an hour. And then I'll come back and torque it down to the proper specs. Put the new stuff in. And like any time I'm replacing fluids, I'll drive this around and recheck it. But for the most part, that's it. Nice. I'll probably crawl underneath here every once in a while just to stare at the shininess. I'm still constantly looking around for leaks after I wash it off, and I discovered a small leak in the uh, crankcase pulley oil seal. I'm not surprised about this leak given the age of the vehicle. Those seals start to get tired. Now for me, when there's a leak in the engine, it's pretty straightforward change the oil seal or change the gasket. I can't stand leaks and I don't go for magic charms in a bottle or snake oil or any other quick fixes. I want to do the job right. But in this case, I'm going to give this a try. It's called AT205 Reseal. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm a big fan of Scotty Kilmer. If you don't know who Scotty Kilmer is, he has a big channel on YouTube and he's been a mechanic now for over 46 years. This guy truly is old school and he's the last of his kind. He's a true mechanic in my mind and he's a great channel to watch. You can pick up a lot of tips. And actually just a few months ago, I saw him talking about AT205 Reseal. And if it's good enough for Scotty Kilmer, it's good enough for me. I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. It's worth 10 bucks just to uh, test it out. See if Scotty's right. Now that's after about a hundred miles of test driving, and it may be still weeping a little bit, but that's a lot of stoppage. In fact, I find that very acceptable. That's a nice tip from uh, Scotty Kilmer pretty much stop that dripping. These vans make it pretty easy to troubleshoot since you can watch your engine actually in operation while you're driving. I've been really happy overall with how easy it is to get parts for this vehicle. Uh, whether it's an electrical ballast or a seal for the transmission, very easy to get. Of course it helps that I have a big city uh, near me, but overall it's, it hasn't been a problem getting any parts for a vehicle of this age. And dealing with Pep Boys, O'Reilly, uh, and AutoZone, and even Napa. I would say AutoZone wins hands down. They always have the part most of the time in stock or if I call in the morning they can get it by one o'clock in the afternoon. So I buttoned up my engine, my drivetrain fixed all the leaks. One thing I can't stand is leaks, whether it's oil or uh, an exhaust leak, I, I just can't stand it. So I'm glad to have all that behind me. I basically put in a new electrical system and I'm ready to move on to the aesthetics. One thing I started with, remember that broken uh, piece on that cabin? I replaced that with the flashing and I'm ready to move on to the rest.
I'll see you guys in a later video.